I'm going to read to you a very difficult section. It's very, very short though, about six and a half minutes, the length of two YouTube videos. <laughs> I always read short because basically I want you to like me. And um, afterwards, John and I are gonna have a little conversation, which will be recorded for posterity for YouTube. And it'll be interesting, anyway. So I'm gonna to read to you um, sort of like toward the end of the book. It's 1976. We're in Yokohama. We are not in Midtown Manhattan. And we are not at Kinakunia Bookstore. We are in an ward office in Yokohama, Japan. It's 1976. There are three characters I'd love for you to focus on. It's only really three major characters. It's Moses, who owns a pachinko parlor. His son Solomon, who is a teenage boy. And they're both Korean Japanese and Etsuko, who is Japanese, and she is the girlfriend of Moses, the pachinko parlor owner. So from the top, Moses, pachinko parlor owner, Solomon, Moses' son, Etsuko, the Japanese girlfriend who's a restaurant owner. So I'd like to do what we readers do best. Let's imagine. The Yokohama Ward Office was a giant gray box with an obscure sign. And the first clerk that they saw was a tall man with a narrow face and a shock of black hair buzzed off his sides. He stared at Etsuko shamelessly, his eyes darting across her breasts, her hips, and her jeweled fingers. She was overdressed compared to Moses and Solomon who wore white dress shirts, dark slacks, and black dress shoes. They looked like the gentle Mormon missionaries who used to glide through her village on bicycles when she was a girl. Your name. The clerk squinted at the form that Solomon was filling out. Suramona. What kind of name is that? It's from the Bible. He was a king and the son of David, a man of great wisdom. My great uncle named me. And the boy smiled at the clerk as if he was sharing a secret. And the boy smiled. He was very polite. But because he had gone to school with Americans and other kinds of foreigners at his international schools, Sometimes Solomon said things that a Japanese person would never have said. Solomon, king, great wisdom. Koreans don't have kings anymore. What did you say? Etsuko asked. And quickly Moses pulled her back. And she glanced at Moses. His temper was far worse than hers. Once, when a restaurant guest had tried to make her sit with him, Moses, who happened to be there that night, walked over, picked him up bodily, and threw him outside the restaurant, breaking the man's ribs. And she was expecting no less of a reaction now. But Moses averted his eyes from the clerk and he stared at Solomon's right hand. And Moses smiled. Excuse me, sir. We're in a hurry to return home because it's the boy's birthday. Is there something that we can do? Thank you very much for understanding. And confused, Solomon turned to Etzko and she flashed him a warning look. And the clerk pointed to the back of the room and told Moses and Etzko to sit down. And Solomon remained standing opposite the clerk. And in the long rectangular room shaped like a train car with bank teller windows running parallel along opposite walls, half a dozen people sat on benches reading their newspapers or manga. And Etsuko wondered if they're all Korean. And Moses sat down 
And then he got up again, and he asked if she wanted a can of tea from the vending machine. And she nodded yes. She felt like slapping the clerk's face. In middle school, she had once slapped a gossipy girl, and it had been very satisfying. And when Moses returned with their tea, she thanked him. You must have known. You must have warned him, Nick. I mean, you told him that today would not be so easy. And after the words came out of her mouth, they sounded harsh, and she felt sorry. No. I didn't say anything. And he opened and he closed his fist rhythmically. I came here with my mother and brother Noah for my first registration papers. And the clerk was normal, nice even. So I asked you to come. I thought maybe having a woman, a Japanese woman, by his side might help. He exhaled through his nostrils. It was stupid. It was stupid to wish for kindness. No, 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 no. You couldn't have warned him. I shouldn't have said it like that. It's hopeless. I cannot change his fate. He is Korean, and he has to get those papers. He has to follow all the steps of the law perfectly. Once, at a ward's office, a clerk told me that I was a guest in his country. You and Solomon were born here. Yes, my brother Noah was born here too. And Moses covered his face with his hands. Anyway, the clerk wasn't wrong. And this is something Solomon must understand. We can be deported. We have no motherland. Life is full of things he cannot control, so he must adapt. My boy has to survive. And Solomon returned to them. Next, he had his photograph taken. And afterward, he had to go to another room to get fingerprinted. And then they could go home. And the last clerk was a very pretty woman with a long ponytail. And she took Solomon's left index finger and gently dipped it into the pot filled with thick black ink. And Solomon depressed his finger onto a white card as if he was a child painting. And Moses looked away, and he sighed audibly. And the clerk told him to pick up the registration papers in the next room. Let's go get your dog tags, Moses said. Solomon faced his father. Hmm? It is what we dogs must have. And the clerk looked furious suddenly. The fingerprints and the registration cards are vitally important for government records. There is no need to feel insulted by this. It is an immigration regulation required for foreign. And Etsko stepped forward suddenly. But you don't make your children get fingerprinted on their birthday, do you? And the clerk's neck turned red. My son is dead. And Etsko bit her lip. She didn't want to feel anything for this woman, but she knew what it was like to lose your children. It was like you were cursed. And nothing, nothing would ever restore the desolation of your life. Koreans 
do a lot of good things for this country, Etsuko said. They do the difficult jobs the Japanese don't want to do. They pay taxes, they obey laws, they, they raise good families, they create jobs. You Koreans always tell me this. And Solomon blurted out, she's not Korean. And Etsuko touched his arm and the three of them walked out of the building. She wanted to crawl out of the gray box and see the light of outdoors again. She longed for the white mountains of Hokkaido and though she had never done so in her childhood, she wanted to walk in the cold, snowy forests beneath the flanks of the dark, leafless trees. In life, there was so much insult and injury, and she had no choice but to collect what was hers. But now, she wished to take Solomon's shame and add it to her pile, though she was already so overwhelmed. Thank you. <laughs>